In this lesson, we'll take a look at the derivative of a polynomial function. And we're going to start with the power rule. It says if f of x equals x to the power of n, then the derivative f prime of x is defined to be nx to the n minus 1. Notice what you're doing in the power rule is you're taking that exponent n and bringing it down in front, hence the n here, x. And then what you're doing in the exponent is you're subtracting 1 from the, pre the original exponent. So 1 subtracted from n would be n minus 1. Now, we're going to prove this derivative rule. And uh, this is the definition, or first principles definition, of the derivative. Uh, f prime is the limit as h tends towards 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x over h. Now, this is our function, x to the power of n. So when I go to uh, write out what f of x plus h would be, I'm substituting x plus h in place of x. So it be x plus h raised to the power of n. Hence, that's right here. Uh, minus f of x, well, this is the original f of x, so that goes in place here, so x to the power of n. Now, in order to simplify this, we're going to have to do some factoring. And uh, an example of the factoring, um, now the exponents we have here, the powers aren't any particular number. We're going to prove this for any number n. So here's an example. Let's say we were factoring x cubed minus y cubed. That factors into x minus y times. And then the other polynomial is actually x squared times y to the 0 plus x to the first, y to the first, plus x to the 0, y squared. And notice what's happening to each exponent. Um, the uh, two exponents are both 3. So this is just x minus y. It's actually the things that were cubed in the x cubed minus and y cubed. And so this factor would have to be x minus y. Now what happens over here is the exponents in the x, the first part of the x cubed minus y cubed, uh, goes from power of 2 down to power of 1 down to power of 0. And what happens to the y's is they do the opposite. They start at a power of 0, power of 1, power of 2, etc. And so that's just a factoring pattern. If we were to extend that out further, like if I had x to the fourth minus y to the fourth, that would factor into, again, x minus y. And the, the other polynomial factor would be x to the third. Now, I could write y to the zero. I don't really have to write y to the zero, but for the purpose of showing the pattern, I guess I will. And then it would be x squared, y to the first. x goes down one exponent again y goes up 1, and then in the end we'd have x to the 0, y cubed. So that's a factoring pattern I'm going to use in the next line. And so, if I'm factoring x plus h to the power of n minus x to the power of n, then the first factor is like the x minus y. It's the two things that were to whatever power uh, subtracted. So it's the x plus h minus the x. And then what goes in here is the first thing. And remember, you see, notice this exponent is 1 less than this. So if this started with a power of n, then this will go n minus 1, and then 1 less n minus 2, and then n minus 3, etc. So what's in this big long polynomial is x plus h to the n minus 1. And uh, there's actually an x to the power of 0 here. We don't normally write that because x to the power of 0 equals 1. But there actually is an x to the power of 0 here, here. And then this exponent goes down one more, and this one goes up by 1. If we were to write the next term in here, it would actually be x plus h to the n minus 3, because I would subtract 1 from this. And then there would be an x. See, this was 1 here, so it would be an x squared, just to show. Now, so what's in this big, long uh, uh, polynomial is actually very important because it's actually it's, it's, the, it's what we get when we differentiate any x to the power of n. Notice that the last term is, is this one raised to the power of 1 less than this one as per the two examples up here. So x to the n minus 1. 
Now, notice that this x and minus x, they add to 0. So actually, this whole factor is just h. So that h will divide out with this one. And so we're actually taking the limit as h tends towards 0 of just what's in these square set of brackets. So I'll write that down again. Now, if, if you evaluate this, and we can now, we can actually substitute 0 in place of h as h tends towards 0. Then what we end up with is this. We end up with a whole bunch of terms that are all the same. And I'll show you why. Uh, if we put 0 in place of h, then this is just x to the n minus 1, which is actually that very first term there. If we put 0 in place of h, then this is x to the n minus 2 times this x to the first power. And if we add the exponents, n minus 2 and 1 add to n minus 1, and that's the second term. And that continues all the way through right down to the very last term is another x to the n minus 1. Well, one thing I forgot to point out when we did the factoring up here, if I go back to the x cubed minus y cubed, it was x minus y, x squared plus xy plus y squared. Notice that if n is 3 here, that there are three terms. So whatever the uh, power is on the, the difference of two perfect powers, uh, that's the number of terms actually in the polynomial on the end, the big long one. So there are n terms here, and they're all the same. And so that's why we could then call this n x to the n minus 1, because there are n of these that are all identical. So the derivative of x to the n is n x to the n minus 1. Flipping over to the second page, uh, we're going to talk about another derivative rule, the derivative of a constant function. If uh, k is a constant, k is any real number, the derivative of any constant is 0. Remember, the derivative represents a rate of change. So a constant, by definition, doesn't change. So that's why its derivative would always be 0. So uh, in example 1 here, now of course this is a power rule like from the previous page. The power rule says that you bring the 10 down in front, and it's x then to the power of, and we subtract 1 from the exponent. So then this derivative would be 10x to the power of 9. Bring the 10 down in front, subtract 1 from the exponent. In b, this is a constant, 8's a constant, so its derivative should be 0. The uh, constant multiple rule for differentiation. Now the constant multiple rule for differentiation says that if a function f of x is equal to some constant, k refers to a constant here, a constant times, times some other function, so g of x is some other function of x, then to find the derivative, f prime of x would be just the constant multiplied by the derivative of g, the derivative of this function. In, um, in Leibniz notation, the derivative with respect to x of ky, so y is some function of x, is just k times the derivative of y with respect to x, dy dx. Now, how we use this idea then, so 5 here is our constant and x cubed is the function of x. So to differentiate this, the, the rule says that it's the constant, the 5, multiplied by the derivative of the x cubed. And using the power rule, just like we differentiate x to the 10th and got 10x to the 9th, the derivative of x cubed would be we bring the 3 down in front, and you, uh, and you decrease the exponent by 1 to 2. 3 minus 1 is 2. Now, 5 times 3 is 15, so of course our derivative was simplified to 15x squared. Now, normally we don't write this step out. Normally, we do this. Normally, we actually just bring the 3 down in front and multiply it by the 5, and that's the 15, and then decrease the exponent by 1 to 2, so it's 15x squared. Another similar example, the derivative of 11x to the 4th. The 4 comes down in front, multiplying by the 11 to give you 44, and you decrease the exponent from 4 to 3. You always decrease it by 1. It says derivative of x to the n is nx to the n minus 1. So the derivative would be 44x cubed. Uh, 